It's no secret that these days, Edgar Wright is one of the most unique and entertaining directors creating movies. There are a plethora of video essays on YouTube that speak about him and his style, his work, his technique, many of them a bit half-baked. And I am by no means qualified to critique one of cinema's most dynamic auteurs walking the earth today. What I might be a little bit more qualified to speak about though is his early work, having done some extensive research over the past few weeks. For some people, the only film of his that they know is Baby Driver, but of course his career goes back further than that. For some people, they think it's Shaun of the Dead. For others that might know a little bit more about him, they might think that his first film was A Fistful of Fingers. And this might not have been his earliest work, you know, it might have been a five minute skit or something, but there was actually a film that predates both of these, a superhero parody called Carbolic Soap. The film was made in 1992 when Edgar Wright was just 17 years old. And I actually guess in a way this was the first of a trilogy of hour long films that he made between the ages of 17 and 20. With one of the two being a cop film called Dead Right which would go on to inspire hot fuzz in major ways and the other one being the aforementioned western A Fistful of Fingers both of which you can find online. I would actually recommend doing this if you're a fan of Edgar Wright's because it proves that even from an early age, he had sown the seeds of technique and skill and artistry that he would later become world famous for. What you can't go and watch on YouTube though is Carbolic Soap. You can't watch it online either. You can't watch it full stop because this movie is lost. And if you've been subscribed to me for a while, you know what that means. After a full year since last making one, it's time for another installment of Tales from Lost Media. Yeah, that's the jingle. It's pretty shit. <laughs> Let's talk about Edgar Wright's lost film, shall we? So right off the bat, if we're talking about lost media, we're given so much less to work here than anything I've covered previously in a Tales of Lost Media video. There is so much more that we don't know than what we do. So let's ask first of all, what do we know? Well, as I said, it was 1992, Edgar Wright was 17, and this was one of his first films. I believe this was his first full-length film, if you want to call it that. It was 60 minutes, and it had a cast of at least seven people. Those being Martin Curtis, John Knowles, Lucy Tilbury, Dominic McKenzie, Melissa Burden, Amy Bowles, and Graham Lowe who actually might be best known for going on to play the human statue in Hot Fuzz, the two go way back. I did some research into these actors to try and find out some information, maybe find them on social media and hit them up with a message, and my search was fruitless. These people are ghosts online. The film was also reviewed by numerous people as shown on the poster. Obviously these are very tongue in cheek reviews with Graham Lowe saying it's better than your mum and Lee Marl saying it's the best film since Kling Film and Mike Morris saying it makes JFK look like BFG and Harold Meeker saying Graham Lowe is enthralling but not in the film. I tried to dig up some information on these people, the people who I assume were also Edgar Wright's old classmates, but with names as common as these it's very hard to find much. We also know that the film was shown at Kenyon Hall on the 12th of May 1992, with entry being 50p. VHS copies of the film were sold for £7.50 and 50 people reportedly attended the screening of the film. Now I couldn't find Kenyon Hall on Google Maps, but it is public knowledge that Edgar Wright went to the Blue School in Wales, England. And the Blue School happens to be on Kenyon Road, so I assume that he presented the film at school in the hall. So what else do we know about this lost film? Well, we know a few things about the production based on interviews given with the cast and crew. For example, Edgar Wright once said, I did a superhero spoof when I was about 17 called Carbolic Soap. I remember on the end credits, I used something from the score to Dario Argento's Phenomena because it had a particularly epic and cue. I think that it was by Goblin or at least one of those members, such as Claudio Simonetti. I definitely remember those things fondly. And castmate Martin Curtis is quoted as saying, Edgar put me in pretty much all of his shorts. I vaguely remember doing something called Infrared Fred. I was the villain in Carbolic Soap about a superhero with soap based powers and dead right. Graham was Edgar's muse, so he always played the hero. I'd end up doing whatever else needed to be doing because I was available. And if we're talking about the roles that each of these actors would play, we know that from Simon Bowes, the production designer of Carbolic Soap, his sister would have likely played the damsel in distress archetypal character. Potentially at least, although that might just be speculation based upon his interview. I've also found an interview where Edgar Wright engaged in an episode of Indie Film Hustle when he spoke about the early productions. He had this to say. So once I got the video camera, then 
I was around the time I was like 17. Then I was really like off to the races. So I did like, a, I did three. I did a superhero movie that was called Carbolic Soap. Then I did a Western, Fistful of Fingers. Not, of not, the, not the film version, the video version. Mm-hmm. Like the video version. And then the final one that I did was, uh, an, it was a cop film called Dead Right. I kind of figured as a sort of indie filmmaker that the more people that were in it, the more people might buy a copy. <laughs> <laughs> So I was really like dead right. And I was only 18. I think I sold like kind of 200 copies of it at like 10 pounds each or something like that. There so... you go. At this point though, we're kind of running out of leads. So I think it's only fair to speculate. Going a bit looser now, Edgar Wright back in 2005 participated in an interview with Guerrilla Filmmaker's Handbook where he referenced Kabbalah's soap unspecifically, stating that the trilogy of films that he made between 17 and 20 got larger and larger in scale and size, and since Kabbalah's soap was the first of these, I would assume that the actors on the film poster may have been the only ones to feature in the film. Having lots of extras at this age and budget is very difficult, and if you compare Dead Right to A Fistful of Fingers, you can see that there was some evolution in the ambition and scale there, thus proving evidence for Edgar Wright's point. After the completion and subsequent release of the film, Wright participated in an interview on the children's television series Give Me Five, which ran from 1992 to 1994, and this gave me a few more clues to try and track down the film, I've actually used the footage in this video quite a few times. In the interview, Edgar Wright is joined by Martin Curtis, who we've spoken about a few times in this video. He is the villain in a lot of Wright's early work. And he is interviewed by Jenny Powell, as they showcase a short film that Wright produced called Help. At the very end of the interview, Wright speaks about his other films, one of them being Carbolic Soap, and one of them being Rolf Harris Saves the World. <sighs> yeah, that one didn't age so well. Edgar Wright since come out and noted that the only reason that he made this film at the time was that one of his mates could do a really good Rolf Harris impression. And, you know, no one knew what he did at the time, but these days it's quite hush-hush. But regardless, he was selling that one for £5 and Carbolic Soap for £7.50, so you might want to assume that Carbolic Soap might have been of a higher quality because he was selling it for a higher price. It's interesting to me to see what a young Edgar Wright could not only make, but how naturally he grasped filmmaking. Just hearing a younger him talk about the art makes it clear that it was something he was born to do. What I thought was more interesting though was actually down in the comments. Something caught my eye, and it was a message left by a commenter with an Arabic name. I have no clue how to begin to try and pronounce that, but he said that Martin's now a teacher in Saudi Arabia who had taught him English at the Saudi Amarco Oil Company. Or at least so he was five years ago. I tried to get into contact with the person who left this comment, but to no avail. If this lost film is to be found, maybe this could be an important lead. But even so, right now, we don't have it. So where does that leave us? Well, to be honest, I think we've run out of road. The only realistic way that we might ever get to the bottom of this is if Edgar Wright cares to shed any more light on it, or perhaps if someone who worked on the film or someone who might have bought a copy might share it. He said that about 200 people bought Dead Right for £10, and I'd go out on a limb and say that this film sold a few less copies, let's say about half of that, so we'll say about 100, though it could be a lot less. This was his first so-called feature length film clocking in at only 60 minutes, who knows? Maybe Wright is embarrassed these days by the production. It's a possibility. But also at this point, the man has obviously gone on to create much better and more relevant work. An alternative is that simply he doesn't have it. Maybe no one does. My parents have very little footage of me when I was a baby. Those VHS tapes are long gone. And that was only 20 years ago, let alone 30. I wish I had more of a ray of sunlight to cast upon you, but the fact of the matter is, there is a real possibility that this film might be lost forever. Which is indeed a massive shame because Edgar Wright has not only become one of the UK's, but more generally, one of the world's most cinematically significant directors of the past 20 or so years in my opinion. For now though, we haven't got much more to work on, and so this has been another episode of do 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 Tales from Lost Media, or whatever. Thank you for watching. <laughs>